When it comes to indie games, there are a few things that are guaranteed to grab my attention, and at a glance, my friend Pedro fits the bill pretty nicely. Backed by Devolver Digital? Check. Centered around satisfying and stylish violence? Check. Accompanied by an energetic synth-heavy soundtrack? Check. My friend Pedro is exactly what it advertises itself to be. A silly, fast-paced action game that encourages you to kill with style and speed, but ultimately it feels padded out, despite the relatively average runtime. Don't get me wrong, my friend Pedro has some really fun, satisfying gameplay to offer, but it peaks pretty early on in that area. You play as a masked amnesiac who, under the guidance of a banana named Pedro, is tasked with killing waves and waves of thugs and assassins because they're there, I guess. Regardless, you make your way through these 2D levels, clearing out enemies as you go using an arsenal of various guns and environmental elements, with the game ranking you on your performance at the end of each level. The combat itself is where my friend Pedro shines, giving you twin-stick shooting mechanics and a decent variety of guns to go crazy with, from shotguns and assault rifles, which are more powerful, to pistols and SMGs that can be dual-wielded and therefore make use of the game's split-aiming mechanics. Locking onto one enemy while free aiming with a second gun is fine, if a little bit fiddly, and splitting your aim like this allows for higher scoring kills, and at the end of the day, the real fun of my friend Pedro comes from trying to clear the levels stylishly. This includes using the environment, by causing enemies to be crushed by barrels or kicking skateboards into their skulls to kill them for instance, or throwing some acrobatics into the mix, whether by using my friend Pedro's focus mechanic, its dodge, or its simple platforming elements. First off, the game's focus feature lets players slow time down, which serves a handful of purposes. It gives you some breathing room when you're dealing with overwhelming enemy numbers, it gives you ample time to wrangle the split aim function into doing what you want it to do, and it lets you pull off sick flips whenever you jump, which in turn increases your score. Secondly, you have access to a dodge that makes you pretty much invincible while it's active, at the cost of a severe drop in accuracy, which, again, increases your score if you do manage to pull off a kill while you're dodging. You'll also gain bonus points for kills achieved during wall jumps, and though the wall jumps themselves are pretty satisfying to pull off, my friend Pedro's platforming is easily its least enjoyable element. It serves its purpose well enough, but as the game goes on it puts more and more focus on challenging platforming, and jumping around just doesn't feel as accurate or as responsive as it needs to for this to be enjoyable. Thankfully outside of these sections with tripwire traps and instant death pits to avoid, the game's mobility options are functional enough and don't detract from more combat heavy sections. In fact, elements like zip lines and swing ropes often add great acrobatic opportunities during combat, and as long as you're not forced to platform with any precision, everything is fine. But as soon as you are forced into extensive platforming, the pace of the game grinds to a halt, and my friend Pedro just isn't nearly as entertaining when it gets bogged down like this. While the platforming itself isn't great, the game overall is fairly fun, and it's simple enough to just pick up and play while allowing for some very cool skill shots that'll let you get creative from fairly early on. My friend Pedro also regularly adds some new mechanics and gimmicks as you progress, such as surfaces that let you ricochet bullets, a hat that lets you fly as long as you're dodging, and bouncy pads, to name just a few. Unfortunately, it feels like these elements either slow the game's momentum or just get in the way of the fun at its core. The ricochet surfaces are the most fun element, allowing you to pull off some awesome trick shots, but it's the only gimmick I can think of where I wasn't happy to see it leave after its introduction. It feels like the developers probably agree with that sentiment too, as it's one of the few gimmicks to keep showing up regularly after its introduction. They're constantly used in solving puzzles as well as combat, and though this is fine, again it slows my friend Pedro's momentum down to its detriment. My friend Pedro doesn't really offer much in terms of narrative reasons to keep playing either. There's the initial mysteries of who your amnesiac character is, who this banana Pedro really is, and why everyone is trying to kill you, but the plot is treated as window dressing, nothing more. The story doesn't have any intriguing twists or satisfying answers to offer, though its ending is just weird enough that I don't regret having played through it. My friend Pedro's writing as a whole leans into weird humour, as if you couldn't tell by the talking banana, and though not every joke lands and the story doesn't really go anywhere interesting, it is good for a chuckle or two. Even though my friend Pedro does lean into its humour more often than not, I wish it had more fun with its overall presentation. It is good for a laugh whenever Pedro shows up on screen to emote in reaction to your sweet combos, but the rest of the game is pretty visually bland. Plenty of grey construction sites and gang hideouts. My friend Pedro even drops you into a series of sewer tunnels for a solid amount of time, as if the environments weren't boring enough. There's one section of the game that stands out, and while it's one of the less fun sections to play, thanks to its weird fixation on bouncy platforming, it is memorable. I will also say that I love the added touch of showing your highest scoring sequence during the ranking screen. It's an awesome detail, and I think more games with ranking systems should utilize something like this. 
The game's soundtrack is much more consistent than its visual presentation, with pulse-pounding synth in the same vein as Katana Zero and Hotline Miami, accompanying the gratuitously stylish violence. It may not be as memorable as the soundtracks in these aforementioned games, but it's enjoyable nonetheless, and doesn't feature anything that could be reasonably called annoying or grating. Although, at the end of the day, gameplay is king in a game like this, and for the most part, my friend Pedro has some really fun gameplay to offer. It dips a little bit into tedious platforming a bit more often than I'd like, but it would be crazy of me to deny just how good the combat does feel. It's a little unfortunate that my friend Pedro doesn't really offer much in terms of in-depth replay value, but if you're the type that likes to improve your ranks on levels, then the game does offer that much at least. With all that said, my friend Pedro is good. It's far from perfect, what with its forgettable visuals, mediocre platforming, and inconsequential story, but the gameplay, specifically while it's focused on combat, is genuinely very fun and offers plenty of opportunities for experimentation. It's just that there's not a lot of reasons to try new things unless you're really keen on improving your scores. My friend Pedro is definitely worth checking out, but I don't know if I'd be rushing out to buy it.